Hi, and welcome along to this first video on quadratics, the first of quite a few. I think we've got uh, seven or eight videos to do here on quadratics, quite a big topic in the P1 syllabus. If this is your first topic that you're doing for the year and this is your first video, welcome along. Hope that these videos will be useful and helpful for you. Uh, I've got the syllabus up here, What you, the stuff that it is that you need to know, uh, really important, especially when you're studying at the end of the year to stick really closely to the syllabus and check out what it is exactly you have to know. So I, I stick to this really closely. Today we're going to be looking at carrying out the process of completing the square for a quadratic polynomial ax squared plus bx plus c. All right, so we're just going to cover that first thing there. In the other videos we're going to talk about the graph, the vertex, solving quadratic equations, quadratic inequalities, discriminant, uh, simultaneous equations and what I call disguised quadratic equations. So you may have seen some of these before. This might be all new to you. So good luck on all this stuff. Okay, before we get into the completing the square, I just want to talk about quadratic. Uh, quadratic is just a, a, a something with an x squared in it. Now you can see I've got three different ways here where we'd use the term quadratic. We've got an expression, x squared minus 4x plus 1. A quadratic equation where we've got that equal to zero, so it's got an equal sign in it, so it's an equation. And then we've got y equal to x squared minus 4x plus 1, which is now a graph. We're talking about a graph now, as soon as we've got a y in it. And the graph is a called a parabola. Okay, so anything with an x squared term in it, we're kind of going to use the word quadratic, the highest power of x squared. Of course, if it's got an x cubed in it, then that's something else. That's called a cubic. So polynomials are just... Um, Terms poly means many, so expressions with uh, whole number powers of x in them. So if you look at this example over here, we've got a, a, a polynomial with a degree of 4, because power of 4 is the highest. This is a polynomial degree 21, and these things here are not polynomials. See, this is x to the minus 1, that's no good. This is 3 root x, so that's x to the power of a half, so that one's no good. That's not polynomial. So. We're looking at polynomials here, and in particular quadratic polynomials. So completing the square. You all know what a square number is. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, etc. They're the square numbers. So algebraically speaking, these three things here are squares. x plus 1 squared, 1 minus 2x squared. What we're going to do here is learn how to start with a quadratic expression and write it in this form right here. Okay? A, X plus B squared plus C. So we're going to kind of complete the square. So we're going to make it into a perfect square and we're going to complete it by adding a number here at the end. That's the form that you want to get these uh, quadratics in. It's called completed the square form. First simple example, X squared minus 4X plus 1. So the way that we're going to do this is pretty simple. The number here that you put in the brackets is half the number here. Okay, so that's your first step. Half the number in front of the x, put it in there. So you've got x minus 2 squared. Now, hopefully, you can see why. If we expand out this bracket, x minus 2 squared, we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, so we've got the first two terms already x squared minus 4x, we're good. But when we do this, x squared minus 2 all squared, we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. We want plus 1. So all you need to do now is ask yourself, how do I go from 4 to 1? The answer is we subtract 3. There's my answer. There it is and completed the square form. Simple. Another method some people like is they write x minus 2 squared, half the number in front of the x. They minus off this number squared, minus off 2 squared, and then just add the 1 on. That also gets you the same answer. Minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Okay. So you might like that second method. I kind of go for the first method. Second example, x squared plus 6x. So x plus 3 squared, half the number in front of the x, x plus 3 all squared. Now what number goes here? If we square out this bracket, we get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So if we want to just get x squared plus 6x, we're going to have to subtract 9 off. Okay, so x squared plus 6x is the same as x plus 3 squared minus 9. So 
in this one here, and they sometimes have this in the exam, state the values of A and B. So here A is 3 and B is negative 9. So here's a neat visual way to look at completing the square. Um, here we've got, for this one here, we've got x squared plus 6x. Okay, and we want to know what's the value of C that makes this a perfect square. Alright, so we're... It's kind of completing the square, if you like. Um, the technique that we've been using is half the number in front of the x, etc., to find out what that value of c would be, so that it's a perfect square. So it'll be x plus 3 all squared. Here's, here's what it looks like visually, though. If you start with x squared, and you've got your 6x's like that. All right, so let's arrange those tiles. So we've got x squared plus 6x, like that. Now we want to complete this square off. Now what do we need to put in there so that that square is completed? And hopefully you can see the number that we need to go in there is 9. Right, exactly. And now that it's a perfect square. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is a perfect square. The other way we did it is half the number in front of the x, which is 3. So we want to have x plus 3 all squared. So x plus 3 all squared is x squared plus 6x plus 9. So that's another way of doing the same problem. Okay, this example is a bit trickier and very similar to all the ones you get in the exam. Um, very, yeah, very, very similar. 2x squared plus 8x minus 12. Okay, so there's two methods here. Let me go through the one on the left. I've taken out a common factor of 2 in all the terms first, and you have to do that. You've got to get the x squared term on its own first. So... Common factor of 2, in this case it factorizes nicely, notice that, 2x squared plus 8x minus 12. Now I complete the square on this quadratic here. So half the number in front of the x, x plus 2 all squared is x squared plus 4x plus 4. How do I go from plus 4 to minus 6? I've got to subtract off 10, so that's the vital bit there. Notice the 2 is just sitting out the front here. Okay, I've just done this, so this part here is the exact same now as this part here. Okay, then I just expand the brackets. 2 times this term gives me that. It's as simple as I can write it. 2 times minus 10 is minus 20. Got it. So A is 2, B is 2, C is negative 20. Method 2, which I'd suggest would be the one you'd probably want to go for most of the time, is just take out the common factor... In this case, take out the coefficient of the x term outside the brackets for the x squared and the x term only. The reason this method works all the time is because sometimes you might have an odd number here on the end, so if you take a 2 out, you're going to be left with a fraction here and it gets a little bit messy uh, if, you do, if you do method 1 here. So if this was, say, 5 on the end, you'd have 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 over 2, and then it gets a little bit tricky. So... I suggest that you do method two. So you take two out of the first two terms. So we've just got the x squared on its own. Now I'm going to complete the square on x squared plus 4x. So once again, half the number in front of the x is 2. Work out what x plus 2 squared is. That's x squared plus 4x plus 4. We just want x squared plus 4x. So to get from there to there, we have to subtract off 4. Okay, so that's done. So that bit there is now the exact same as that bit there. Then I expand the brackets. 2 times this gives me this. 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. The minus 12 just sits there at the end. Minus 8 minus 12 is minus 20. Done. The same answer as the first one. Okay, you've got to be careful with questions where you've got a negative x squared term. These are the trickiest ones. So this is the last one here. Um, so 4x minus x squared in the form a minus x plus b squared. This is completing the square, okay? It doesn't look like it, but it is. Okay, state the numerical values of a and b. All right, so what I've done first is rewrite 4x minus x squared as minus x squared plus 4x. So I've just reversed the order here, okay? Then I've taken minus 1 out as a common factor. So now I've isolated the x squared term, and you've got to do that. Just get the x squared term on its own. Notice minus x squared and minus minus 4x is plus 4x. Okay, so these are all equal. Now I can complete the square on that thing there. So we've done that one just above. Half the number in front of the x is minus 2. x squared minus 4x plus 4. 
from this. So to get to this, we need to subtract off 4. So now that and that above are the exact same. Now just minus both of these, minus x minus 2 squared, gives me this. Simple as I can write it, minus minus 4 is plus 4. And now I've just reversed the order again, so I'll put the 4 at the front, minus x minus 2 squared. So now it looks exactly like this, a is 4, b is minus 2. So just make sure when you're completing the square, you always get the x squared term isolated first before you have a go at it. Thank you.